Welcome to Code Rage Mobile and this session on building great iOS UIs and getting your apps accepted into the Apple App Store. My name is Serena DuPont and I'm the product manager for Rad Studio. During the session, we're going to cover the preferred fire market components for mobile application development, building iOS apps that adhere to Apple's UI guidelines and the do's and don'ts, and then we're also going to show some demos that further highlight what we cover during the initial slides today. So let's get started. As you're probably familiar, FireMonkey comes with a, uh, a big range of different components that you can use for application development. But there's a list of components that are really the, the preferred ones to be used on mobile. And what that means is these are the components that you should use on your mobile applications when you're building a mobile application because they've, they're designed to be used on mobile applications. They are really the types of controls that you see commonly in mobile applications and they have been optimized to be used in mobile application development. T button, for example, the click here button in the screenshot is an example of T button. T speed buttons are used on toolbars for toolbar navigation, like a next button or a glyph button. T label, of course, in this case, the title of the uh, toolbar title. A T edit, which can be parented to um, a list box item can be styled as a transparent edit, for example, if you want to allow the user to type into the edit control um, and you're doing a sign up form, then traditionally you would set that as a transparent edit. T memo, uh, T number box, there's also a T count calendar edit, uh, T switch, T list box. T list box is really designed for short um, uh, data bound lists that are designed to be settings lists or short user input forms, whereas to list view is designed for long scrollable data bound lists uh, where you have a lot of data that you would want the user to scroll through. Combo box, which the, the combo box invokes the, uh, uh, the custom picker at um, runtime, progress bar, T track bar, T toolbar, of course, free application toolbar. T panel, T tab control, and T scroll box. You can, of course, also use other components that are not as part of this preferred mobile UI components list, and they're all listed in the tool palette. However, these components that I've just mentioned are the ones that are really designed to be used for mobile application development. Now, when it comes to building iOS apps with FireMonkey that adhere to Apple's user interface guidelines, and there are a couple of things to keep in mind. When you're building your application, you really want to follow these mobile UI patterns that I described earlier, but you also want to make sure that you style your controls properly so that you can ensure they not only get accepted into the App Store, but also that they're user friendly for, like, for the end user who's actually using your application and that they follow these basic style principles. Now looking at some key component differences between desktop and mobile, for example, on a desktop, you may have been using the tree view if you've been building VCL applications, for example, or, or, or um, Windows applications in general. On mobile, you would either use a T-list view for the long data bound lists, or for shorter lists, you would use a T-list box component. There's also no, um, no use of a radio button or radio group in iOS applications. Instead, you would either use a T list box, and I'll show some examples of that a little later on, or you would create a segmented control. iOS applications also traditionally don't use checkboxes, so in the cases where you would have a checkbox in your desktop application, you would have a T switch control in your mobile application. For overall application navigation and the file menu, so to speak, there's no traditional file menu in your mobile applications. So instead of using a T menu bar or a T main menu, you would use a toolbar with buttons or a tab control. So I'm going to go through a list of do's and don'ts and show you some examples that highlight what you should and shouldn't do when you're building your FireMonkey mobile application. Here's an example of a don't. In this case, we have a toolbar with a label that is designed to be our title, application title. And there are a couple things here. We should ensure that we are styling the label correctly and that we also align it correctly. So I'll show you an example of the do's. So you should use the tool label styling option for the tool label component, T label component. 
Uh, T label component should be parented to your tab control and it should be aligned to the center. Another example of don'ts. Navigational back buttons are used very commonly in uh, mobile applications, especially if you're building a master detail application where you have a list and the user clicks an item and they navigate to the next page, but also in settings pages to navigate back to the, the main settings screen, etc. Now, a couple examples here of don'ts is we see in the first screen, we see a back button that is just kind of floating on our toolbar. It's on the top toolbar, which is correct, but it's just floating on the toolbar. So the next screenshot, it's on the bottom toolbar, which is also incorrect. And the next screenshot, it's aligned to the right, which is also incorrect. And in the fourth screenshot, it's used as a cancel button, which is also incorrect. What you should do instead is you should only use the navigational back button for navigating to a prior screen. It should always be shown on the top left corner and should be used with the tab back tool button styling option. So in this case, you would be parenting your back button to your toolbar and you would set the alignment to top left. And you see two examples here. One is a back button that just goes back to the main screen and one here that says tab one where we used our where we used different text on the back button, which is fine. You can of course use this to navigate up several levels between your different um, screens, but it's designed to be used as a back button. So it has to be used to navigate to a prior screen, cannot be used as a cancel button, it has to be used as a back button aligned to the top left. Tab control don'ts. So we have three screenshots here with common mistakes. First we have the tab control aligned to the top, which is not common on mobile applications, so it's not an iOS um, application standard. We also have the, in the middle screen, we have the title on the bottom and the, and the tab control line to the top, which is incorrect. And in the third one, we have way too many tab items on the bottom. As a general rule also, and I'll show you what we should do here, is you should always use icons with text with tab controls. Tabs should always be aligned to the bottom and you should use five or less tabs for the iPhone form factor. And if I go back to the previous screen here and you look at the um, screenshot on the right, you see that is, if you have more than five tab items, you're really cramming way too much information into the iPhone form factor. There's not enough space and it's impossible to read what each tab item actually does. So what you're supposed to do instead is if you have more than five, if you have the need for additional navigation, so you would need more than five tabs. What you should do is you should make the fifth tab a more tab and this is again you just select a tab item and the styling property you would select the styling for the three dots that you see here and then you would use a, a list box and align it to the client and add items for each additional navigation. If you're looking at the music app for example on the iPhone that's a good example of that practice. Toolbar glyph buttons. Here's an example of some don'ts. You see that in the um, toolbar screen here, the first screen, we're mixing bordered, meaning outlined and non-bordered icons. You really shouldn't do that. You should follow, use either bordered glyph buttons or non-bordered glyph buttons on a toolbar. And in the second screen here, we're cramming them way too close to each other and they're also not positioned um, correctly. Here's an example of do's. So you can see here, we have proper spacing, the toolbar icons are not cramped, and they're all positioned at the same um, X coordinates, and they're styled either as a bordered button or non-bordered. In this example, all the glyph buttons are styled as bordered buttons. Toolbar text buttons. So here we have a couple good examples. You shouldn't put a T button, for example, shouldn't be parented to a toolbar button, a tool toolbar, excuse me. A uh, T button could be used um, as a toolbar button. However, it's not designed to be used as a toolbar button. And what I mean by that is that the styling options are similar to what the T speed button styling options are, but speed buttons are really designed to be used for toolbars in your mobile application. And all the screens you can see the sizing is incorrect 
um, the positioning is incorrect and then the do screenshot you see that the styling is the tool button style for a toolbar text button which is correct and we use the t-speed button and in this case we've also anchored it to the top right and you can see that the spacing between the top of the button and the bottom of the button um, relative to the actual toolbar is equal as well switch control so this is another common example of um, things that it's easy to, to uh, do wrong when you're building a mobile application first screenshot is a checkbox checkbox is again very commonly used um, and desktop applications not designed for mobile applications. A mobile application you should use a T-switch control. Second screenshot, switch control is placed on a toolbar, which is also incorrect. And on the third one, it's just floating on the form, also incorrect. Instead, what you should do is you should always parent a T-switch to a list item. So in this case, we have a screenshot here of the settings header, which is an example that um, I've, I've created. It's just a list box that is using the group pattern and the transparent style item to get the rounded corners on the list box. And then I've parented three different T-switch controls to each of the list items and anchored them to the top right. And that's the proper use of switch controls. Again, just to highlight this, switch controls should not be parented to a toolbar. They should not be floating on the form. They should be used in a list item in your iOS applications. Radio group. So there is no concept really of a radio group in your iOS applications. Here's an example of a don't. Instead, what you should do is you can either create a list Again, in this case, we used a T-list box with a grouping kind of group property, as well as the transparent style and the checkmark accessories you can see in the first screenshot here. And this is actually a screenshot from an example that you can have a look at that we ship with the product, and it's the music player example that's in the FireMonkey mobile folder. And then you could also create a segment of control via a speed button group, and that's the example on the right here and this is again three t-speed buttons and they have a segmented button left segmented button middle segmented button right styling option and we also in this case have given each of the t-speed buttons the same group name property which allows us to create a segmented control from the t-speed button component so just to look back here, again, the radio group is not something that you would do on a mobile application. So even though the radio uh, button component is available to you, it's not designed to be used in a mobile application. Instead, as you can see in the first screen here, you would use a list box and you would use the checkmark accessory, which is one of the item data accessories that you would show on the selected repeat mode in this example, or you could create a segment that control via the use of speed buttons. General button use, this is for the T button component. Um, don't see, as you can see, the text is really cramped. Uh, the, the buttons are really cramped on the first screenshot, and in the second screenshot we use different sizing and, and spacing, which is also incorrect. Instead, what you would want to do is you would make sure that the button height is the correct height, and when you drop a T button onto the form, we have the default height set, which is the correct size. You could make it a taller button, but it really shouldn't be a shorter button because we've defaulted to, to the correct height for iOS applications. And you should make sure that they're the same width and space correctly. Creating lists. So for working with lists, we have two different list components that are available to you to use in your mobile application. First one is T list box. And as you can see here in two different examples, T-ListBox is designed for short lists on iOS with no to minimal scrolling. And it's designed to be used with the rounded corners. So for example, here we have the first screen, we have a settings list, and the second screen we have an input form. And we have a variety of different options available for the list box. So for example, we have the group header item that you can add when you're working with the rounded list, and that would give you the style text like you see in the first screenshot here that says inventory or shuffle music or personal information part two. We also have the ability to add additional descriptive text above or below the settings list. And you would do that by placing a T label onto your form 
and using the embossed label style property. And what that means is in some cases you might build a settings list where it says inventory, shuffle music, adjust volume, but you might want to put some longer descriptive text under adjust volume that says, you know, sliding, uh, sliding this bar allows you to adjust the volume between 1 and 100, etc, etc. And in order to have that style correctly, meaning you get the blue font with the um, kind of white glow effect, you would use a T label, place it underneath that list item, and you would use the embossed label style property. For input forms, you can of course parent a t-edit to each of the list items and you can either use a transparent edit style or you can just work with the other various edit styles if you don't want to use a transparent edit. List view is another new component. Um, list view is really designed for long data bound scrollable lists. So if you're building a, uh, say you have your warehouse inventory list or your customer list, anything that requires a long list that's bound to data on your mobile device, T list view is the, um, the desired component to use for that. We have an item appearance property that provides various built in appearance modes. So as you're familiar with iOS applications, you've probably seen the standard uh, arrow accessory, there's also a blue button accessory, check mark accessory, etc. You can set, you have the ability to really data bind the list view to your data source and there's various item appearance modes as well. So it could just be text, text with an image, text with a button, etc. You can also create your own custom appearance modes and for each of the preset modes that we provide, there's also an edit mode. Commonly today, you will see in iOS applications, there will be an edit button that you place onto a toolbar, which would be just be a speed button with the edit text, and it would invoke the edit mode. And then you would see check marks, for example, to check the items that you wanted to delete. And that is all something that you can do with the list view component. So now let's get to some demos, and I'm going to show you some examples in Delphi that showcase some of the content that we've covered in the slides. So let's have a look at some different examples that further highlight what I've covered during my slides. Now this is a sample called Settings Project and it's available in your FireMonkey mobile folder. And I'd like to cover with you some of the key um, settings that you have to set in order to do the proper styling when you're creating a settings page. So here we have a toolbar parented to it. We have a T-label. We have aligned the T-label to center. This is an important setting. When you are setting up the application title, you would want to place a T-toolbar component and a T-label component onto your form. Align the T-label to center. And then also set text aligned to center as well. Another option is you would want to set the style lookup to tool label. And that gives you the um, correct font, font size, and font styling for an application header. We also have here a T-list box component it's called settings list and uh, we've added several items to it and also several group headers. So if you right click and we have a look at the items editor here is you can see that you can via the items editor move your headers up and down and these are the group headers. Again you can add one by right clicking your list and select add item list box group header and they have the proper styling. Uh, for the fonts um, as well as the rounded corners etc in order to create a settings page. Now in order to get the rounded corners and the correct style options for each list box item you just have to select the list box and for T list box select a grouping kind to grouped and then also set the style lookup to a transparent list box style. Now for each of these items you can manually change the item data. And this gives you a lot of customizability. You can, for example, here we have account type. Um, you can expand the item data menu and you can say I want to have a detailed text, which is the text you see aligned here. And um, I want to have my list main text say account type. And I want the accessory to be a more, which is just a standard um, arrow. And then you can click through these to toggle between the different options or use the drop down menu. Here you can see another good example of the switch controls. Again, a T-switch should never just be placed on the form. So what you shouldn't do is you shouldn't put a T-switch, for example, onto a toolbar. So this placing a T-switch up here would be incorrect. So what you want to do instead is you want to parent it to your list box item and then you want to anchor it. 
uh, to the top right and make sure that the spacing is correct um, in all these cases. And another common example that you would see would be descriptive text on a settings page underneath your list box items. To do that you would put a T label onto your form and let's write some text. Okay, let's resize this. And we have word wrap turned on and we can also now set the style lookup to embossed label and that gives us the same exact um, that gives us the same exact styling that you see here for the group headers. And that's the styling that you want to select when you're creating a settings page. You want to select the embossed label style option. And now what you can do too is if you wanted to have the font be smaller, you can go to the styled settings property. And the styled settings are the settings that you get from the actual style that we have predefined for the style for this particular control and this particular style lookup option. Now let's say you wanted to ju just change the size but you want to keep the styling. You would just untoggle the SS size option and then you could scroll up to your font property and set the size to something different for example. Now let's run this and have a look. And here you see an example of our descriptive text. Um, you can see it has the different font size, it has the same exact um, styling that is designed to be used for a settings page. We have our switch controls. You can see too here we have a an animated transition in this case and the way that is done is we have placed an action list component onto a form. We've created an, a list box item tab click event and in this case we're just executing the tab action and what that does is it automatically applies the transition effect, the animated transition effect. Media player is another good example so here what you see is we have two different screens. This is another example that ships with the product and you can see here we can toggle between the tab control, you can go up to the active tab to easily toggle between the two. This is a music player sample that will uh, pull the music that you have on your iOS device and display it here for playback. And then there's also a settings dialog. So what we have here is on our settings dialog we've done is we've created a list again with the rounded corners, uh, a settings page with various list items and in this case we're able to use this list as a mutually exclusive list similar to a radio group that you would see on Windows. There are really two main options when you want to recreate that is you would use a list box and in this case we have a list box and then what you do is on click you will see here we have on click we are setting the accessory. We're going between um, no accessory to actually setting the accessory for the check mark. And that is the proper way to do an, a, a radio group like uh, implementation on iOS. So you would either use a list box and then set the, checked, uh, the check mark. And that's a good example to look at. Or here we have another example. This is one of the iOS code snippets where we've recreated a segmented control. And the way you're creating a segmented control is you using speed buttons. So in this case, for example, we have three different speed buttons that we've placed next to each other and we have defined a group name for all these. So whenever you want to have speed buttons behave like a segment of control, you have to group them together and you can set whatever group name you like. This is another good example here. We have a group camera flash type. This is just the name that we've chosen. And you can see we've set that for all these three items and the camera type items have their own group name. And then again in the style lookup, you would set it to segmented button left, segmented button middle, and then segmented button right. If you wanted to set uh, one option to on by default, you can of course also set this to is pressed. And this would be an example where you have one of the segments pressed by default. So whenever you're trying to work with a radio group, trying to recreate um, the implementation of a radio group that you would have on Windows, you would either create a segment of control via the use of speed buttons or you would use a list box like you see here with a check, check mark. 
Now here's another example of um, an input form. So one of the things that we discussed during the slides, of course, as well, is accounting for user input. Um, this is a sample you can look at. It's called tab slide transition. In this case, we have an actionless component. And there are two ways that the user can interact with this form. They can either swipe to the right or left to proceed to the next form or go back to the prior form, or they can also click the next button. We're also leveraging the built-in change tab action uh, implementation. And that gives us several properties that we can set. We can set custom text. We can also set the type of um, transition, whether it's just a basic transition that jumps from screen to screen, or we get an animated slide transition, and also the target tab, the tab that we want to, to slide to. You can see here again, this is a, uh, an input form where we can go between the different screens. We have a form, and then what we've done is we have leveraged the use of a tab control with tab position set to TP none. And what that does is it gives us these design time dots that we can work with. But at runtime, the user doesn't see the tab control. They have no idea that we're using a tab control. You're just able to use the tab control to work with um, multiple screens in this case. Also here, you can see that uh, another rule, one of the things you should do is you should parent an edit control to a list item. It shouldn't just be floating on the form by itself. Uh, when you're using an edit control, you can also choose from various style options. So for example, for an input form where you want the user to type in their name, you might want to choose the transparent edit to get a similar um, effect like you would get, for example, with the contacts application on the iPhone. Now this is another good example, it's called sliding tabs that you can look at and um, this is also a sample that ships with the product. The good, what this shows you is one of the things that I covered during my presentation was the use of um, tutorials. A lot of applications today, today implement tutorials as a way of quickly teaching the user how to use the app. Of course, mobile applications most of the time are really designed to have a, a specific focus, single focus or multiple focus areas, but they're not designed to be complex. However, there are certain types of apps where maybe you want to quickly highlight key features to the user to make the user familiar with the application and what it does. One of the ways to do that is by um, using these sliding tabs. And there are many different applications today where once you load the application, you can swipe through a couple different screens. You'll see some nice graphics. You'll see some descriptive text that shows you what the app can do. And this is a, a good example of that as you can slide between the, uh, the different tabs. You can swipe to the right or to the left. You could, of course, also add uh, additional tab items. And you could easily repurpose this for that type of an implementation. Now, I have another example that I wanted to show you that um, that shows you how to do an overlay uh, for some type of a tutorial and, or instructions that you want to show. So this is a this is our Fire Photo um, sample application, and in this case, what we've done is we have our top help, and this is just the T layout component. And we've parented several images, and these are just arrows pointing to different areas of the, uh, the product, different features. And then we also have some different labels. And as you can see here, what we're doing is we're pointing to different areas to instruct the user what they can do with the product. And this is inside the top help component. Now let's have a look at the code. And what you will see here is that the top help is uh, visible in form create. So when the user first loads the application, the top help is visible. And it's also visible when the bitmap container is empty. And what that means is that if, if no image is loaded or the user deletes their image that they applied an effect to previously, they will see this overlay again. This is a really good way to quickly create instructional overlays for your mobile applications to guide users on how to use your application. Again, this is something that's a trend that we're seeing more and more today in mobile applications is either these types of slide transitions to go between uh, different screens as a quick uh, quick start tutorial for an application or transparent overlays. These can be, of course, could also be um, a transparent PNG if you're working with a designer who's doing these type of sketch like um, overlays. These are 
which are very popular today as well. So many times today when you're building an application with FireMonkey for multiple devices, you could of course use alignment and anchors. So you can align um, your controls to the top, you can anchor your buttons so that they look correct across all the different devices, whether you developing for an iPhone, an iPhone 5, iPad, etc. There might also be cases where you want to have a very specific form for each layout. For example, you're building an application where you want your controls totally laid out differently on a landscape form versus a portrait form. Now let's have a look at this um, example here. We have a landscape form and we're calling just a form resize event and depending if the height is smaller than the width then we're showing the landscape form and if the height is larger than the width then we're showing the portrait form. So let's run this and deploy it to the simulator. Here's our portrait form and now let's rotate this and here's our landscape form. This is just another example that, on how you could create applications with totally different forms. Now, if you're coming from desktop application development, one of the items that I talked about in the table during my slides was a T-Tree View. Now, commonly on Windows you may use a T-Tree View. A tree view is not a component that you would use in a mobile application. What you would use instead is either a list view component or the list box component. Now the list view component is really designed for long um, scrollable lists and I'll show you a little sample here that I created. So I've created a basic example here that allows me to edit my list, delete items from my list, and then hit the done button to toggle from edit mode to regular display mode. So what I have here is I have a toolbar that's aligned to the top and I have a toolbar aligned to the bottom. I have two speed buttons, uh, done button styled as a done button, that's an actual style called done tool button in the style lookup property. Edit button is just a regular speed button style. I have a label here as my title. And then I have a tool button, toolbar aligned to the bottom for which I'm going to choose the bottom uh, toolbar which has a specific style. You can see it has an outline. This is designed to be used as a bottom toolbar. And of course also my delete button which I've styled as a delete tool button. Now my list view here I have various options. There are several presets that you can choose from and they expose different bindable members in the Life Bindings Designer. So you see here as I have my prototype component, this component allows me to work with sample data. You can just drop it onto a form from the tool palette, right click and add various fields of sample data. And in this case I have an item and I chose the image list item appearance. And it gives me two bindable members, an image or item.bitmap and a text property item.text. And also an accessory, so in this case you can choose from the same types of accessories that the list box has available. You can choose from more, the blue button, or the check mark. You can also toggle the visibility of the accessory on or off. For each of the presets there's also an edit mode. So you can toggle the edit mode and you can see that the content gets shifted over, the accessory is hidden for the edit mode. And you see the edit mode is shown at design time here. You can choose from two different types of um, edit modes, ed either a checked edit mode or a minus delete edit mode. So for this example I've chosen a show check edit mode. Toggle ba uh, back to the display mode. A couple things that I've done is I have my speed button here and this is the proper way to, to style the application. In this case I've hidden it, it's not visible. And I have two buttons, and these are just overlaid. They're two buttons. I have my edit button that's shown by default, and then I have my done button. So what happens is on my on click event here for the edit button, I've set list view one dot edit mode to true. Um, I set the done button to visible and the delete button to visible. And then when I click my done button, I have set the edit mode to false, so I'm going back to display mode. The done button visibility defaults and the delete button defaults, so they will both be hidden. Now let's deploy this app to the simulator. So 
You can see I can invoke the edit mode. I can check items off my list and I can click delete. And I click done and my delete button disappears and I'm in the regular uh, display mode. And of course for, for in this case we have set up an on-click event for the delete button to check for the items that we've selected and then de delete the selected items. Another example, this uses uh, a custom appearance that we've created um, for demo purposes here. And there are two different ways to, to fill the list, either via live bindings or in code. You can see here we have a prototype bind source, which is our um, prototype component. And you can drop it onto the form and you can right click it and add additional fields. The fields are then exposed in the Life Bindings Designer and they're visually bound via drag and drop to different items. What we have here via the custom appearance is we have again our list view and we have an item appearance and we set up a custom appearance called multi-detail item. And what that gives me is it gives me additional text members that I can bind to. So if I just have my standard set up, we just have my list item for example, I would only get one text um, item that I can bind to. But the multi-detail item I can bind to many different uh, properties. I could also hide the image if I didn't want to show an image for example. And you can see this is automatically updating. And then I'll can, I can also select this and I can also toggle the edit mode. This is an example of a um, a custom list view appearance that we've created. This is something that you can do of course as well. Um, we will also make some of these samples available for download. Most of the samples are already available in the installed FireMonkey samples folder, but this is one that's uh, a sample we specifically created for this demo. You can see here, let's run this sample. You see we can toggle the edit mode, we can fill it in code, or via live bindings. Now another example I wanted to look at is the iOS control sample and this is a really good example to show you the different styling options that are automatically built in. It also gives you an idea on how to correctly style your controls. You can see here we have a tab control with speed buttons. This is again a, um, a segmented control for like a, a toolbar type control. So for example, um, the Fire Photo app actually leverages this. So if we have a look at the uh, Fire Photo example again, you can see here we have styled a segmented control within the toolbar. And in order to do that, you would just select the tool button left, middle, middle, middle. These would all be styled as middle since we have several middle segments here and then right to get that particular style option. You can also see that we have examples for the done and delete buttons, also the different toolbar buttons. So we have glyph buttons. So you can see here when you're working with a, a glyph button, what you should always do is you should either put all uh, non-bordered glyphs like you can see here or bordered glyphs on a toolbar. Tabs of course you should always style your tab with an item. What you should never do is have no style item and just text. You should always make sure that you have an item selected. You can either um, an icon selected use one of the presets of style lookup or of course you can leverage the custom icon property to load your own custom icons as well. List box. This is an example of the list box settings. Again, the list box is really designed for um, settings pages or um, input forms. It's really designed for shorter types of lists and have has been optimized for um, these types of examples that I've showed you today. And you can see some styling options here. This is a good example to look at the iOS controls demo. It also ships with FireMonkey to get you a better idea about how to style items. You can course select one and see the different style lookup options. Additional controls, here's an example of how to create a segment of control. Again, style option is key and then of course also um, setting a group name for each of the speed buttons. And then here we have a memo control and you can see the different style options for edit control. Now, as part of Rad Studio XE4, there are also two additional style packs. You can use the native style the black style or transparent style. You would place two style books onto your form and in this case you select um, style book one and you can browse to the documents, public documents, RAD Studio 11.0 styles 
and then iOS. I select the black style, apply and close, and then for Stylebook 2, you select the 2x style, which is the Retina high resolution style, apply and close. And then for Stylebook 1, you just link it to the high res stylebook. And then on the form, you go and set your stylebook. And here you see the black style. And you can see all the style options that are available in the black style. And those are the, the we have matching style elements for everything. So if you're creating a mobile app and you want to apply the the black style, you can easily do that. And you will see that there's an equivalent element for every single style element that you had in the uh, default native blue style. Now we also have some premium styles that are available right now for you. Premium style pack here, iOS. Let's have a look at the Jet style. This is a custom style that we created that's currently available for download. And again, we you load the standard version and the high resolution version. And apply and close. And now you can see this um, custom style. Let's deploy this to the simulator and have a look. And this is one of the custom styles that we've created that is currently available for XE4 users to download. And you can see here we have our back button, we have our segment of control, done button and delete button, and these have a, a fully custom style. Thank you very much for joining me for today's Code Rage mobile session, and we're now going to do some Q&A. Okay, I'll go through some of the questions. Uh, one of them is, where can we get the link to SourceForge? If you go to SourceForge.com and search for Rad Studio, you'll find our directory there. I would definitely recommend going there because it, we're always in the process of adding um, additional samples, and many of the samples that you show, that um, you saw today actually already are shipping with the product and are accessible in the documents, public documents, uh, Embarcadero Rad Studio 11.0 folder, and either the iOS code snippets or FireMonkey Mobile folder. However, there are some that I showed today, and I'm sure other members of the team here have showed that um, don't currently exist on the SourceForge directory, but will be added soon. And I think David is in the process of pulling up that link if I could as type. well. The drawer application, yes, uh, drawer menus are common on some applications today. For example, social media applications where the menu is only the application menu is invoked by clicking a button that slides in and out. Um, that will be available as a sample soon as well. Um, the same also, of course, applies for a PDF that I'll be working on on the do's and don'ts. How to download the premium styles? If you have purchased XE4, they are available. I believe the link is on our site. Um, I think it might even be in a PowerPoint that David had up earlier talking about the bonus items that are available. Do you know, David, if that link to the uh, style pack was listed on that? It's in the registered PowerPoint. user download area. Okay. So if you just go to registered user download area, you'll find the first three items as registered user downloads if you own XE4 Pro and above. Uh, the Cloud Pack Components highest, the Meta Converter, and the Premium Style Pack are all in there as downloadable zip files. They're ultimately housed in Code Central, but you can only get at them if you're a if you you have to register your XE4, not just own it. Now that turns on the right thing. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, list view with master detail, yes. This is something that um, I've gotten questions about. Um, commonly on iOS you will not see tree views. Tree views are not used in iOS applications. What you would use instead would be a master detail type setup. So for example, in a tree view on Windows or Mac, you click an item and it has a, an expanding view, right, where it shows you additional information. What you would do instead is you would have the main information on your master form and then on the detail form you would show the information that you'd normally show in the expanding menu. An alternative of course would be to um, display all the information in the list, a taller list with multiple text items such as the custom list view example that I showed a little earlier today as well. Um, let me go through some more questions and let me see here. Oh, where to install the style pack? Um, there should be a link in the README that um, directs you to the doc wiki where we have very detailed information on how to uh, work with styles. Um, just as a basic uh, you know, point, when you're working with styles, there's a style book component that lives in the tool palette and um, all the styles for both Mac and iOS we provide in a standard resolution and high resolution retina resolution size. And what you just do is you just um, save the styles 
and added that style files to a folder somewhere on your on your hard drive and then you put two stylebook components onto your form first stylebook you click on the resource button and you click load and you select that folder on your hard drive and you select the standard resolution dot style file uh, the second stylebook you select resource load and you select the 2x version and then for stylebook one which ha has the standard resolution stylebook associated with it there is a higher stylebook property and you just uh, click in there and select stylebook two and that way you are associating your standard resolution um, stylebook with the high resolution one that you've assigned and then on the form you select the form and then on the stylebook property you set that to stylebook one because at design time you're always working with the non-retina style and that's all you should have to do um, and you can put your style files anywhere the ID installs its style files in well on Windows 7 into users public documents um, rad studio exe uh, 11.0 styles there's a style folder but you can put them anywhere you want exactly and then there's also the alternate black and transparent styles it's a native styles and they are accessible via the um, documents public documents rad studio 11.0 uh, styles folder yeah. and there's an iOS subfolder and the process of adding them would be the same Again, on our doc wiki, there's detailed information on how to work with styles um, that basically walk you through the steps that I just explained. And I think you explained to me there's two different extensions, right? There's dot .fsf. Yes. FSF. I can't say FSF. F. <laughs> I always want to say FSF. Time twister. <laughs> FSF and STYLE. Yes, there's dot .fsf and dot .style. And dot .fsf is just a binary format that we have for some of the additional native styles. Dot .style is the format that FireMonkey styles get uh, created in if you are creating them via the bitmap style designer. Okay. Let me see. There are some other questions. Oh, there's always the question that comes up. It came up all last week, too, probably on your webinar, because it was D Apple WWDC iOS 7 week last week, as well as Mac OS X. Uh, Mavericks. Oh, Mavericks, yeah. From so we, we do live pretty close to that. You know, yeah, it's a surf cool spot name. up above Half Moon Bay. I've been there. Yeah. It's a nice place. We also have a uh, conference room named Mavericks here. Yeah, we but, are. But the question about iOS 7? Yes, we will be supporting it. Um, in the future, of course. It's in just beta test right now from Apple, so there's nothing we can do because uh, it's beta test, uh, and it's supposed to be available sometime this fall. I think it's a combination of styling as well as new APIs. Sure. Yes, yeah. exactly. So you can check out Anders' talk about what do you do about APIs that we don't necessarily have wrapped and how to get at them, And uh, but stay tuned with us uh, as we work with Apple on the beta test of iOS 7 and I think they even said at WWDC last week that these styles that they were showing all these icons were still a work in progress. Sure, I mean they are in beta. Um, another question came up about samples for frames and uh, working with multiple forms and frames. I believe there's a sample um, but if there's not we can of course also um, make some samples available um, and we can create some samples around frames. Working with frames is actually pretty straightforward. Um, today, what you would do is you'd have your form, and then you'd add your frames, right? You right-click your project, um, add new frame. And um, you can do that, for example, if you're building a master detail application for both iPhone and iPad, and you want to have distinct, similar but still distinctly different um, layouts, you could have your master layout in one form, uh, one frame, excuse me, and your detail layout in another frame. And then on the form, you would just select Use Frame. You, you would select the frame the same process that you have for VCL. And then once you have your frame actually part of your form, or let's say your tab, you can uh, tab one or tab two, you would then adjust the style options. There was this question, maybe you answered it because I was typing the answer to something else. If you want to have a style associated with all your forms, then you should load the style book at, in your main program before you call create forms, right? Yes, that's a good way to go. And I, I believe we One have way. some information actually on yep. that. And I think Marco Cantu recently blogged about that as well on his blog. And again, I just wanted to mention that most of the samples that I've shown today and that my colleagues have shown are available on SourceForge. But again, we'll be adding them soon. And they also get installed with the product. You've probably also seen when you're installing XC4 and you go to the, the welcome page, there's a start here tab. And 
you should um, see some of the code snippets that we've highlighted and both Anders and David have created really great videos that walk you through the steps of getting started with iOS and also show you how to use some of the code snippets. Quick videos to just get you started. Oh, there was a question about multi-line list views and that's an example I showed that was a custom appearance that we've created if you're looking at the list view component in the structure view you'll see there's an item appearance property and there are four presets if I recall correctly for display mode and edit mode and um, there's a matching edit mode either the minus delete edit mode or the check delete edit mode for each of the presets you can also choose custom and what custom allows you to do is you can for example adjust the list height you can adjust the position of the text element so if you wanted to do a um, a, you wouldn't want it to lay out your text elements differently for example you had uh, a title and then a job description and they were stacked you could do that you can adjust how your buttons are displayed where they're displayed etc um, and we also created some custom packages that for this demo that you can install into the IDE to get additional item appearance modes this is something of course you could do programmatically yourself as well but we also are planning on making those available via SourceForge as well Oh, likes the list view multi detail. There's lots you can do with the list view, and of course, you can always do things in code too. Once you navigate to more detail, whatever, there's of lots of things you can do on on that resulting set of forms, tabs, whatever. And the nice thing too is that it's fully life bindings enabled. So if you go to view life bindings designer and you have a look at that, you'll see that there are bindable members and the master detail templates in the mobile application wizard and the wizard is what you see when you go to find new mobile application you see the pre-designed uh, pre templates that we've created there are two master detail templates one is for a phone form factor and one is for a tablet those are really good examples to look at they use the prototype bind source which is our sample data component and they show you how the um, control is visually bound to the data source we also shipped another uh, example of the tablet master detail application in the PhileMonkey mobile folder that gets installed with XE4 it's called tablet master detail with search I believe and it shows you how to use search and um, add search to your master detail uh, list view list view application so that you can search the records that you have in your list etc yeah somebody was saying they wanted to have multiple styles and they can have multiple style books you can create or you can load into one style book from multiple style files it's yeah you can you, you can it. also set different style books yeah. for different platforms for example yeah. if you wanted to and I found the link and I posted it it's uh, there's that long link sourceforge.net slash p slash rad studio demo slash code slash head uppercase yeah uh, slash tree slash branches rad studio xe4 and it turns out if you go back one level here's going back to xe all the samples but for the different versions when we started putting all the samples and code snippets on 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 SourceForge, here's XZ4. So FireMonkey Mobile are the more extensive demos. And exactly, it's like the one you showed with the effects, For the photo editor demo. Yeah, that's a that's a really good demo that also oh. shows uh, form inheritance. So if you wanted to see how to do form inheritance, so uh, to, you're basically creating your base form and then you're inheriting your um, iPhone form factor and your iPad form factor. That's a really good example to look at. And those are all in the FireMonkey Mobile. Uh, folder basically they're the combination of what you see in the snippets that have um, additional features added to them right and the I was co the I was co snippets look for things that have iOS space or under or under uh, in the well in the folder but in the projects you'll see iOS because you can't have space in a project name iOS under bar and then the name so those are all the shorter form code snippets uh, some of which have the videos uh, and can be opened from the start here window in the IDE if you've kept the welcome page open. So again, there's all the different ones, including everything, data snap, C++, Delphi. Uh, here's FireMonkey, Delphi, and then if you're C++, uh, C++, FireMonkey are down under the CPP. But yeah, that's really a good, you know, good site to make yourself familiar with. I'm sure you're probably already using it, but especially for Rad Studio demos. It's one that we keep up to date, and that's the quickest way yeah. to get access to the latest samples, and that's also where, we'll be, where we will be posting what we show today. And if you also have a, a subversion client like Tortoise or something, you can go to your samples folder in public Grad Studio 11.0 samples, mm -hmm. right mouse click and say update, and it'll pull from SourceForge yes. and, do the, and update all the sample projects on your local hard drive. That's, of course, also a good way to go.
You can also open, you can, in the ID, you can say file open project from version control, point to the project in SourceForge, and open it directly from there in addition. So there's mm -hmm. lots of ways to get to these. Great. I think uh, we're pretty close to the next presentation. Yep. Yeah, so that's just a reminder of the that. Uh, and, of course, somebody asked about my blog. It's on blogsetembarcadere.com forward slash Serena Dupont. And I'll be posting more information once we have things like um, the PDF available, et cetera. And I can also work with some of the other members on the team to get that posted on EDN. Sure, so that's sure. where you can see my blog posts and trying to keep them up to date and continue to write about all the cool features that we have with Delphi Mobile. Yep, here's to, to do this view. So, and then on uh, all the things on blogs, dot embarkadero.com. So this, the homepage will always show you the most recent, let's say 10 posts or so on, even in Spanish or Russian and so on. Uh, here's one uh, in Portuguese. For and one quick question, somebody that arrived late was asking about the location for the um, training videos. When you're actually running um, Delphi XE4 or at Studio XE4 on the welcome page, there's a start here tab and what you'll see there are videos on how to get your environment set up, how to get started. David also has the doc wiki link up. Oh yeah, this is the all the tutorials step yes. by step. So there are also very detailed step by step tutorials, um, written tutorials, there's also video tutorials actually right in the IDE on the welcome page that you can access, and they're also available on our YouTube channel forward slash Embarcadero TechNet. So lots of things, and, and the doc wiki is always being updated in real time by the doc team, and then they periodically, every month or so, do a help, 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 help creation from the repository, and you get a help update, but always use the doc wiki as the ultimate latest update. And Serena, thank you. Looks like you're already gone from the organizer part. I'm gone, but I'm still here. But you're still here in the studio. <laughs>